I knew this question was going to come up eventually, but I talk a lot in my videos about how I don't use this stove. It's sort of a basic model and it doesn't have a great um, regulation to the temperature. It has three small uh, burner coils and only one large one, so it's not even that functional to me. So uh, I don't use it at all for anything other than additional counter space. So the question finally came up, how do I cook if I'm not using the stove? Well, your answer is right here. This is one of two induction cooktops that I have. This particular one is made by New Wave and it's the PIC2. Now, what I have on here, this big red thing, didn't come with it. This is actually just a silicone uh, mat that you would put in your microwave to keep spills and stuff down on the turntable. And because induction cooktop doesn't heat the actual cooktop, it just heats the pan that you're using, I can go ahead and keep this on here. In fact, you can use an induction cooktop with a paper towel or a towel or anything on it. And you don't really need this, but I don't like my pans to slip around too much when I'm um, cooking with them. Um, so I pretty much like to put this on and I put the pan right on top of it. What's underneath here is this is the glass cooktop. It is a 12 inch glass top cooking surface. This particular unit does have um, six temperature settings and they do um, move up and down in 10 degree inc increments. Um, and I really like that because a lot of the induction cooktops I saw and some of them I tried before this one had a high, medium and low. And what's the high, medium or low? You're like, I don't know. So I like this one because it will actually show you the degrees. Um, let me show you what some of the uh, buttons on here are. We'll go ahead and zoom in. Now we do have a programming feature, which I actually haven't used, but I believe um, that's something to where you can set something maybe to boil and then go down to a simmer automatically. Um, you can set your time here. Now here's your low, your medium, your high, your medium high, your high, and then your max slash sear setting. So what's nice about this is when you push the button, it'll just come up to a certain degree. For instance, I can't remember exactly, I can plug it in and see, but if you press low, maybe it might say, you know, 140 or 200 or whatever. You can actually press the up or down button to change that. So just because you press the low doesn't mean that's the setting you're stuck with. Um, you have your pause and your clear button, and this is kind of um, a commonly misunderstood button. People just use it to sort of clear the machine or uh, turn the, the system off when you're not going to be using it anymore. But um, I've seen a lot of videos where people are cooking on the cooktop, and this has got some safety mechanisms. So as soon as you remove the pot, you get an E1, which is an Air 1 on the display screen. And that means that you've removed the pot from there. And, you know, if you want to go ahead and um, shake your pot around, you know, while you're flipping something, you don't want to have to press the start every single time again and reset your uh, setting or we get it going that way. So what you can do is you're shaking your pan around and getting ready to flip something, press your pause, then you can lift the pan off, flip what you're going to flip, put it back down, press pause again, and it keeps right where it was. So. That right there is a pretty good feature and it allows you to do that. Or if you're going to make an omelet, you can press the pause and go ahead and, you know, tilt your pan around to coat the bottom of the pan with the um, egg again and then just press it again or press the start to kind of get going again. So that's pretty much a, um, a button I use a lot. Now this is a pretty uh, durable cooktop. So far, even before I started using the silicone mat, I wasn't able to scratch it. So I like that. And it also cleans up really well. Uh, you don't want to use anything abrasive on here, but just a regular wet rag with soap and water or even a nylon um, sponge can go ahead and clean that up. And it looks brand new, even though I've used it so many times. Um, I really like the way it cooks. It heats up really fast. It cooks my food really well. Um, and I really don't have anything bad to say about it. So this is pretty much the induction cooktop. And now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the pans and things that you can use when you're using this machine. Now this is an example of what induction cookware might look like. This particular one is actually made by New Wave and it has a ceramic um, insert in here. This is the nonstick. Um, ceramic, which is touted to be the uh, second hardest surface other than diamond, they say, or simply Ming says, and he's the one that promotes these particular set of pans here, the New Wave pans. Um, 
says that that will help to keep the temperature up really high so you can sear anything up to like 500 degrees when you're using a ceramic coating. It's also embedded into the pan instead of coated on which makes it really durable and I have to say that if you've ever cooked in the ceramic coating before it is so super non-stick I'm not even kidding it practically throws the food back out of the pan. I mean nothing will stick to this. You can burn an egg on it, you can burn cheese in there, it doesn't matter. It just slides right out and it cleans up with a wipe. So this is the most amazing material I have ever actually come across. And then on the outside here, this right here is the plate which makes it induction ready on this particular uh, pan. So a way to tell if your pan is going to work on an induction cooktop is simply if a magnet sticks to it, then it's going to work. So here you just put a magnet on it and it's just a standard everyday kitchen magnet it sticks this will work so that's kind of one way to tell and um, sits right on there this particular um, induction cooktop does say it will heat water up um, to boiling in 90 seconds and I've tried that with like a cup and a half to two cups of water in the skillet and it pretty much does it um, if you're using more water though that's not going to be true it can take up to three minutes or so for a, a larger you know base pot of water and it can take up to eight nine ten minutes on your stove so I'm gonna say it does heat up water uh, quite a bit faster than your stove but every pan isn't going to be 90 seconds so you want to be careful um, when you're thinking about that they were really testing that on a skillet like this that was about you know half full or so of water now one thing I do want to mention is that when you are using these because it heats up so quickly I tend to find that in the very beginning it's easy to kind of burn things because we're sort of used to things heating up slowly and we walk away or you know whatever you don't want to do that until you get used to using your induction cooktop you want to kind of stay close maybe use a lower temperature until you sort of figure that out they're not hard to use it doesn't take long to figure it out I'm simply saying you don't want to think of this like your regular stovetop because it is a little bit quicker so having said that that, I'm going to go ahead and show you another type of pan that you can use. Now this right here is a cast iron pan. Specifically this is what's called a, um, oh, I can't think of the word for it here. It's really it's a thinner uh, sort of a light cast. That's what it is. Light cast iron. So what they do is when they make the cast iron pan they shave it down to where it's a lot thinner than a thicker cast iron would be. So that you still get a lot of the benefits of cast iron, but you get it in a really lightweight sort of um, pan on that. And it does have enamel on the back and it's got a nice nonstick coating. Now uh, cast iron is great to use on induction. Again, it does hold the magnet so you know that it's going to be um, able to be used on your induction cooktop. And this right here is actually one of my favorite pans. I love to use this particular pan. So lightweight cast iron, followed no less by regular cast iron. Now this is just a lodge skillet, standard old fashioned grandma style cast iron pan. This is a smaller one, but that right there, pretty heavy though. So that will work on your induction cooktop. So no problems there and you can use, you know, whatever size will fit on this 12 uh, inch surface. Now mind you, when I'm speaking to the 12-inch surface, I want to just show you really quick these circles in here. When you're getting into these red circles, that's going to be your hottest and most um, efficient area. So in here is where the most heat is going to be transferred. And then it starts to lessen a little bit as it gets out. So mostly if the base of your pan fits within the white, that's going to be the area it's going to heat um, all the way out to. And the most being what's in the center. So just wanted to add that in really quick. So the other type of cast iron, and again, this is a smaller version because it's easier for me to show on video. This is a traditional, like a Dutch oven. Um, I love these type of style. I have this one, and then I have a larger, like, Le Creuset one. And this is going to be your thick, heavy uh, gauge sort of cast iron. And this will work on here as well. No problem there. Now, if you want to go ahead and use your own type that you have that, say, doesn't um, have the magnet stick to it, and I'll show you a sample of that. This right here is one of my Calphalon One pans. Really nice pan. It's a really thick gauge. You can see how thick that is. And um, this is uh, pretty much what I would use if I was using my regular stovetop. And guess what? 
the magnet doesn't stick. So that means this is not going to work on my induction cooktop. It was a little disappointing at first, but um, what I did is I did a little research and I found out that you can buy discs that make uh, your pans induction ready. And I don't have it. It's packed away because most of my kitchen is packed away right now. I actually had to dig these out specific for this video. But I have an induction ready um, plate that I bought at Bed Bath & Beyond and it was only like 20 bucks and it fits right on here and it's just a really thin aluminum disc that sits there and then I can put any of my pans on here and heat it up. It does heat a little bit slower. Now I've seen some videos where people have used some of those and they haven't boiled the water at all or haven't worked at all. I'm not really sure what um, type of plate they have. This $20 one I have actually was able to heat this exact same pan right here to boiling in about nine minutes at a roiling boil. And I was able to cook with it from that point on, no problem. So it might just depend on the type of plate you get. And this was a $20 one. I've seen them as much as, you know, $100. But this one particularly worked great. Of course, I haven't tried it with a larger pan, just the saucepan, but it did work for that. So that's pretty much what I have to say about the induction uh, cooktop here. Love it. It gives me more accurate and better results than my stovetop ever did. I can control it better. I can get to a lower temperature. If I'm deep frying, I can see exactly what the temperature is. And when I've put a um, thermometer in there, it's been pretty doggone close. So I really like that. And this also can get really low. So if you're doing candies and chocolates, you really need a lower temperature in order to be able to do that. Or if you want to do fondues or things like like that you need a really low temperature and you need it to stay at a stabilized low temperature and this is actually able to do that uh, you lift your pan off and immediately everything is pretty much not working anymore so if you lift your pan off and forget to turn it off it's not going to like catch fire or burn anything it will generally uh, turn itself off after a certain period of time but as soon as you lift your pan off the heating element is no longer heating now these do say cool tops here and I just want to mention that when you have your pan on here um, this element is actually just heating your pan. The copper coils in here are working off the magnets um, or the metal in your pan and it sort of uh, makes all the metals in there, the little molecules and things shake together and that creates friction. The friction heats your pan and therefore your pan heats whatever's in your pan. So you take this off and the rest of this whole surface isn't heating up but you will have residual heat wherever your pan was laying. So what that means is I have, let me use a darker one so you can see. I have this pan, or excuse me, a lighter one, that doesn't really help. I have this pan on my induction cooktop. It pretty much stops here, which means any of this space here is not going to be heated up. If I remove this pan, naturally it's going to be hot right here where that pan was because the pan itself was hot and the pan itself heated up the glass top. So beware of that when it says cool top, it doesn't mean you're going to remove your pan immediately and go, oh, now it's cold. Anywhere the pan wasn't touching will be cool to the touch. It might be a little warm when it gets closer to where the pan was, but it's really just going to be warm right where the pan was sitting and then it cools down really quickly. So just something you might want to uh, pay attention to. So if you have any questions or any um, thing you want to add or anything to uh, this, please just leave me a comment. I'm always interested in learning new things about my products or any advice you have or if you have any questions. So that is basically how I cook since my stove really isn't very effective for me.